This is the second splicing tutorial and the focus of this tutorial is on differential splicing analysis. So using SpliceSeq to look at the differences between two samples or to look at the differences in splicing patterns between two groups of samples. Um, so one piece of background information before we get started on that. The percent spliced in is a central statistic that we calculate on, on any potential splice event and it's used in our differential analysis. So percent spliced in is simply the, the number of reads indicating something is present in a transcript versus the total number of reads for that, that splice event. So uh, in this example here, if, if exon2 is sometimes included and sometimes skipped, these uh, orange reads here that go from exon1 into 2 or reads that are on the body of exon2 or reads from exon2 that that uh, cross over into exon 3 are all reads that indicate that exon 2 is present, whereas these red reads down here indicate that uh, exon 2 is not present or was spliced out. And so if you take the ratio of these reads up here that indicate inclusion versus the total number of reads, uh, we have you know 8 out of 10 or 80 percent. So the, the PSI value for an exon 2 skip event would be 0.8 or 80 percent of the time exon 2 is included in the transcript. And so for any type of splice event we want to look at, we can compute a percent spliced in, and then we can, can compare spliced in values between samples or between groups of samples. Um, so that's the PSI value. All right, let's take a look in SpliceSeq. So to do comparative analysis in SpliceSeq, the first thing you want to do is go to the view. And we'll start off by looking at the uh, difference between two individual samples. So we're going to switch to the sample comparison view. Uh, and then in the next um, dialog here, we have the, the folders with our different studies. And we selected the first comparison in this study. We're comparing a tumor sample to a normal sample. Um, now th there's three tabs that we talked about in the first tutorial. Uh, the gene summary tab is still available, but when you're doing comparison, the, the tab that you may want to start with is the splice event tab. So on the splice event tab, uh, there's an entry for each differential splicing event that was found. And so you may have the same gene listed multiple times for different events on different parts of the transcript whereas on the gene summary tab you would only have one entry for each gene. But splice event is a great place if you're looking for the big changes in splicing between the two samples. Uh, right now it's listing 3,800 or so uh, differential splicing events that were detected. Uh, you may want to go in and adjust the filters. Um, so let's say that we're only interested in looking at exon skip events and maybe we want to increase the change in PSI value that between the two, the delta PSI, maybe up to at least 20%, and maybe we want to tighten up our p-value and say that we want events with a p-value of uh, 0.01 or less. Um, so if we apply those filters, we can see that now we're down to 327 events. Just And um, what you can do is uh, select one of the events up here. And so this is an exon skip event on the AKAP9 gene. You can get a description of the gene over here on the right. And you can see in the splice graph, we actually have some elements that are turning red and green. I, um, I double clicked on that to sort of zoom in on the event. Over in the legend, it tells me that things that have uh, are in green mean that they were um, higher, relatively speaking, in the normal, the green, uh, the normal sample, and that red were events that were sort of up uh, increased in expression in the tumor sample. So what's kind of neat is if you zoom in like this on the event and then you can scroll through your splice events up here and as you hit each event it's actually scrolling the transcript, centering the event, and it's turning a highlight on to show you where, where the event that was detected was. Um, so it's a nice fast way to jump through and take a look at the events. Um, if we go back to that uh, first event, yeah, if the highlight's bothering you, you can turn that on and off here. But it is on complex graphs. It's a nice way to see where the event is. We have, um, we have more numbers than we had before when we were looking at single sample because there are two samples involved. So when we're looking at the number of reads, the value on the left is coming from the first sample, and then there's a bar, and then the value on the right is coming from the second sample. So we see that in normal tissue, 
we had 104 reads on this splice and in uh, tumor it went down to 15 reads but we had sort of the opposite pattern on this whereas in normal we only had five but it went up to 30 in tumor and so on as you as you cross over this event and the values that we're looking for he looking at here are the raw read values generally you'd want to be working with the OPKM values the ones that are corrected based on exon exon length and number of reads per sample and that gives you something that's a little more comparable um, exon to exon there's one other thing that you can get on a comparison which is the log ratio and that's um, like a log two fold change if you're familiar with those from microarrays and so that gives you a, a feeling for the direction of change um, positive values are ones that are increased in the 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 treated sample whereas negative values are ones that are increased in the control you can also adjust the red and green thresholds if you want over here and that's the value the ratio at which they'll turn red or green and, the, and it affects the intensity a little bit one thing um, that you will notice uh, on on this comparison analysis on the splice event tab is that if you type in your favorite gene you may not find it because this is filtered down just to the genes that had strong differential splice events if you have a particular gene that you really want to go look at the easiest way to do that is to switch over to the gene summary tab where all the genes are and then uh, search on the gene that you're interested in the each of these columns has sorting so you can sort based on uh, currently that comes up sorted on p-value uh, the p-value for just a single sample comparison is a Fisher's exact test of the spliced in reads versus spliced out reads uh, for each sample or you could uh, maybe filter it on by sort on the the change in percent spliced in value the delta psi so um, this sample here had a huge change in, in uh, the percent spliced in value um, you kind of have to work both ends of this list because down at the other end are very big negative um, changes on spliced in value um, and each event indicates the exon where the event occurs and the upstream exon and the downstream exon. Um, remember you can get information here on the exon tab if you want to know exactly what the coordinates are for the exons that are involved in the splice event or the sequence of the exons. Okay. The last thing I want to show in this tutorial is um, the group comparison view. So again we're going to go to the view area up here and instead of looking at the sample comparison we're going to go to group comparison and uh, pick the the comparison that we want to do the, the two groups that we want to look at in this case it's a set of normals versus a set of tumor samples um, and again it works very similar to the individual comparison where we can set some filters or change some filters and after I apply those filters, I see we're down to 97 splice events on the splice event tab. Um, you can click on them and jump through them. They'll be highlighted in the transcript diagram below. Zoom in on them. And so on this event, I can see that the this is the, the exclusion splice is red, whereas the exon is green. So I know that the tumor tissue tends to prefer uh, splicing the exon out at a higher rate than the normal tissue. And the nice thing on a group event is I can, on the, the event, if I right click, I can ask for a scatter plot of the PSI values. And I see that we have a really nice, um, strong event here because in normal tissue, the PSI values range from 75 up to just shy of 90. Whereas in tumor, we had a range of percent spliced in on this, much lower, somewhere around 30 to 60%. So the tumor tissue tends to splice exon 4 out on this, on this gene. The p-value that's presented for group comparisons is a t-test of the individual uh, PSI values from each group. And the other thing you can do on a group comparison is, is right-click down on the graph and ask for a scatter plot of the underlying values. So in this case, we were set to OPCAM, so that'd be the OPCAM values of exon 4. Um, the log ratio I find a little bit nicer to work with and you can actually ask for box and whiskers if you prefer um, and that's for any any exon or splice you can get the underlying data uh, for, for all the members of the group so that's a quick uh, view of comparative analysis in SpliceSeq and uh, hopefully that'll allow you to find some interesting splicing changes in your data